hi everyone welcome to karaoke moments we'll be having a video today and uh, we are going to be discussing about the topic on one man's meat is another man's poison and this is something from discussion just looking at how is there a way that someone can know what type of a man what type of a woman is uh, a surety of having a successful marriage and um uh, listening and looking and talking i want you people to give your thoughts about it because one man's meat <laughs> is another man's poison and why am i saying this it is just from the discussion when people are saying that um uh maybe uh, they, a a taller man is a better friend to a woman and uh a, a handsome you know man as well is a better man to a um, to a woman and uh, they will they look at it from a relationship perspective that it's going to be a better relationship <laughs> i've also seen some um, people saying oh short men or short women they have anger issue esteem issue taller men they are handsome they feel proud of themselves they don't have anger issues they don't have esteem issues and uh having lived for a while <laughs> to me i think uh a tall person may also have esteem issues and have challenges and even not become a better spouse just like a shorter woman might become even a better spouse and even be even more um self esteemed and looking at herself in a better way other than just being short so when it comes to that i want you people to give your perspective what do you think and i remember there is even this saying when we were growing i don't know whether it's still there in our hey days as young girls <laughs> we used to say oh i'm looking for a tall dark and handsome you know having grown up in uh, <laughs> kenya and in africa so and uh, does it really matter whether someone is tall dark and handsome can you find a short <laughs> handsome remember beauty is to the eyes of the beholder and maybe brown one according to the complexion who is a better husband tell me according to your your thoughts do you think we we can be able to say the um stature of someone whether they are tall or short is equal to having a better boyfriend and a better husband per se uh equal as well to a tall lady or a short lady a brown a dark is equal to also having a better girlfriend a girlfriend who is uh going to be in a relationship to make it successful and end into marriage i want to hear your thoughts maybe i'll give a wrap at the end of the video so stick with us listen all the way to the end i'll give a wrap of these points according to what i feel and remember these are just my thoughts and perspective what are your thoughts tell us in the comment section and if you're the first time coming to uh this channel karaoke moments we want to request you to subscribe please and uh view our videos there are other several videos a couple of uh tens of hundreds in uh karaoke moments uh, channel you can visit and uh, be able to be one of us who can uh, subscribe love our videos subscribe like them make your comments and keep on sharing if you're one of those ones who are coming back home you're one of our subscribers we want to thank you for finding a chance and opportunity to come and listen and share with us your thoughts as you watch our videos and keep on sharing with your friends like our videos and drop your comments we will appreciate you for that we will really appreciate you for that so the next point that i'm thinking is educated versus uneducated when you are in a relationship with an educated person you know a profession a career person does it end up making it easy and uh get into a better uh marriage because in relationships i think unless someone is weird i think most of the mature relationship people date okay i know we have their ones of uh, <laughs> younger people who maybe might be uh, not even very sure but i'm imagining when you are 25 and above mostly when you're dating you're dating in a with a, a, a an expectation of leading it to marriage so tell me if you're dating um a man who is educated or a woman who is educated and you end up into marriage do we have education and professionalism leading to 
are equal to a marriage that is going to be long lasting. For example, you're a teacher <laughs> and you get married to a teacher or a teacher, you get married to a doctor or a nurse or an engineer, just the professionalism. That, does it push us to have better marriages and does it have a play? Can an educated person, someone without a lot of education, marry someone who is educated and their relationship end into marriage? Is it even having a probability of you when you're a teacher and when you marry a doctor is not going to... But there, there is also... I've seen some people also discussing and saying that uh, when you get married to the same profession, like two nurses getting married or two teachers or two doctors, the chances of it becoming uh, a long term, like till death do us part marriage, it becomes a problem. <laughs> I think I feel like uh, it doesn't matter that one I can put across. I've seen even people getting married to the same profession, two teachers, and up to old age, they are still together. Are these biases or these are true? Um, let me hear your uh, ideas in the comment section. Can someone who, maybe a man who is very well educated, marry a lady who maybe just went up to primary school level and their marriage to be long lasting and to be forever? Let me hear your thoughts. Then, do we have any careers that are better than others? Surely people have biases. <laughs> I've heard people say, marry a nurse or marry a doctor at your own um, risk. You know, <laughs> that they will be going to work at night. You don't know where they are. Or even people who work at the, with the airlines who travel a lot. People who maybe even work a lot of night shift and day shift. Hey, people, do you feel me? Especially people who work shifts, especially night shift. Do you think you're at a greater risk to be a spouse than those ones who work eight to five? Honestly, allow me to have a perspective on that. I've seen even people who work an eight to five jobs. If they want to not be committed to their marriages, it still happens and marriages will still break and relationship will still break. Am I biased? Let me hear. I think it's more of the heart other than the profession, but I want to hear. How about people who come from countries with a lot of uh, tribes? My next point is, do we have a good tribe to marry from? And that one will ride upon with a good race. Okay, for example, we, we come from uh, countries that maybe some of us, especially I think Africa, but even I've seen even in Asia, they have caste, uh, is it caste or caste, <laughs> whereby people are categorized according to those ones who are educated, I think those ones who are rich. If you marry across tribes or across areas, across uh, counties, for those ones who have counties, across districts, does it mean that marriage will not last? Intertribal marriages, do they have a chance of getting married or not? Must people marry from people from their same locality? Does it make it a better marriage? Remember, as you are saying the title of this video, one man's um, meat is another man's uh, poison. You might like one thing and the other person doesn't. So to me, I want to hear from you, which tribes are the best to marry from for those people who are from tribal countries and people with different vernaculars and how about race do we have a race that is better maybe races that are in um, the u.s races in the uk races in africa that we think all oh, these colors usually or even in asia are better than others let me hear the next one that i thought about is rich and poor does marrying a rich man or a woman with a lot of money Vis-a-vis -vis marrying a man without money or a woman without money help us to have successful marriages. Would you prefer to marry a rich man or a poor man and vice versa, a rich woman or a poor woman? Does it equal to us having a relationship that are long lasting, including marriages? Let me hear from your thoughts because in this one, I'm going to give my wrap at the end of the video. Meanwhile, I just want to continue hearing as you watch without uh, biasing you to think like me. Do you think there's any, do you have any experiences? Do you know other people with experiences? Because to me, I think, wait until the end of the video, I'm going to give my thoughts. So the next one is, yeah, there's usually all these stories of marrying a man who is already a single dad or marrying a woman who is a single woman, meaning a single mom. Does it equal to marriages that can last? Do we have any biases there? Or you can marry a single man with um, who is a single parent with having other children. Maybe they were in a relationship that didn't work out or maybe due to widowhood and their wife died. 
having those children in that relationship, will it make uh, that marriage long last or not? And vice versa, if as a man, you get married to a woman with children, maybe also she became single out of, uh, you know, we have these men also who, <laughs> you hear stories that they impregnate a woman and they run away. I don't know. I'm thinking in my vernacular how that one usually sounds funny. I don't know where they run away to. And I don't know how fast they run away. You impregnate a girl or a woman and you just uh, run away. I think this running away, what you mean is uh, like um, decide not to take the responsibilities, decide not to be part of the life of that child, either knowingly or unknowingly, because that's a very big topic. Some men even don't know they have impregnated. I hear so they might not. Maybe they were not told or the woman didn't want to involve them. Some even know and they do not want to. Maybe this single woman is due to divorce or due to widowhood as well. Maybe the husband could have died. My question is, does marrying such a man with uh, children without a wife in the picture or such a woman without a man in the picture, being a single mom, make a marriage at risk or make a marriage better and to last long? Let me hear your thoughts because this topic we need to hear. So when you look at it, this sometimes can lead to biases. Someone might miss a lifelong uh, partner because of these biases. And in my thinking, now here, this is where my thoughts come. As I said, I was going to give my thoughts as I wait for you, you who is watching, to give your thoughts in the comment section so that we can interact and see what we feel. So to me, what I've, I, I know people when they talk about that, honestly, I don't think that uh, being tall or being short makes a marriage last longer i think it's more of attraction because also you can't just date someone or get married to someone without attraction and that is why we are saying one man's mate is another man's poison some women may just love tall men some men may just love tall ladies it doesn't mean that tall ladies and tall men will make into a better husband or a better wife you can even be a tall lady and get married to a short man if you're attracted to them and everything according to your desires is okay and still that marriage will work. And likewise, even at home, man, you can get married to a short woman. And if they have qualified, because every man has what they desire in a woman, and every woman has what they desire in a man. So as long as they qualify all your checkpoints, everything, maybe you've been thinking about their behavior, maybe their faith, maybe their color complexion, maybe where they come from, their career, so many things. As long as you are liking that. I think the stature, the being torn and short, does not equal to a marriage being successful. What are your thoughts? I push it back to you who is watching. What are your thoughts? Comment and let us hear what you want to tell us. How about education? I, this is another one I feel honestly, education might not be a prerequisite. Okay, it is okay. It is nice for you to have someone who you can reason out together and maybe be able to understand and be able even to read some menu. But you know what? I don't think it's a prerequisite. You might even get married to a very well-educated man or very well-educated woman and still that marriage may not succeed. So to me, I think education, if it was really the only thing that makes one of the things that are very important that makes marriages last. I've seen professors divorcing, even some of them twice. I remember there's a man I met who was a doctor in PhD and I met him at 70 years and he was on his third marriage. And when I met with him, he was on a virtue of telling me he wants to quit his marriage. Ah, and we had a serious talk. And the investment he's done in his first marriage, in his second marriage, in his third marriage, and he still wanted to quit. And I said, Mr. Swain, so I think you need to take uh, slow down on this. Take a look at yourself. What is the commonness on all those um, people, the two marriages that had failed and this other third one that he was saying was going to fail? And we just started discussing at that time. I remember I was young. I was like, almost half of his age. So already, you know, it's a little bit uncomfortable for me to discuss with him such a thing, but I was ready because uh, he's the one who told me. So we discussed about it and we looked at it. And for sure, some of the things that were coming in common as he was acknowledging. And I remember him confessing and saying his first wife, she, he still thinks was the one who was meant to be his wife. And he was on his third one. So I said, I think now being 70, honestly, 
you won't start another marriage work on it and one of the areas was like um he wasn't giving enough time to his women like he was always traveling looking for money and the denominator of all the complaints we saw one of them was time anyway the stories i know i could be many on that case but what i'm saying is i don't think education is really one of the amassed things that makes when you get married to someone a woman who is very educated or a man who is very educated it's going to reassure you into a marriage that is going to be successful what are your thoughts um i would like to hear your thoughts i would like to hear what you think do you have any experiences like i've shared one another one is um tribe and races i posed a question now i'm giving my thoughts tribe and races is another one me i think it's just a i think it's just a, a bias you can get married to a fellow tribe mate from your same village from your same town <laughs> for those ones of us especially let me talk about africa where we talk about even clans we really hold on to them you can be married by someone of the best choice you think your tribe your home area and still it doesn't work out because honestly marriage is hard work marriage it's you to bring your inputs on it and the man and the woman must bring their inputs and be able to work towards the goal of their inner marriage to work through it till death do part i don't think a tribe or a race is something to bias us and to make us feel like oh it is because i want to marry someone i'm still waiting to marry someone from my village so as i've said when it comes also to the issue of rich and poor i don't think monies can answer otherwise all the celebrities who have million of dollars in their accounts should their marriages should be they get married and it long lasts so i still feel it's not and also some people get married early and their marriages long last as early as 20s 22s and their marriage lasts you hear they've been in their marriage for 40 years some people get married in their 30s 40s um, some even 50s and they are happy in their marriage so i think when it comes to marriage and its longevity and how it's going to be long lasting i think it is more of the two people who are getting together they have to think about it and work through how they are going to overcome challenges it's beyond the other physical points we have discussed what are your points let me hear your thoughts and we welcome you again if you're not a subscriber of caro k moments please subscribe like our videos uh, continue uh, sharing with your people and your person uh, who matters to you so that we can be able to continue spreading and I welcome you uh, to watch all the other videos on relationships and perspectives in karaoke moments we love you until we get to meet you again remember one man's meat is another man's poison we love you so much thank you